Hey everyone, on this week's Ask the Editor, we're going to be going over uh, After Effects' new tool called Content Aware Fill. Uh, basically, you're going to use this to remove uh, blemishes, logos, uh, you can take people out of shots, um, and it just kind of gives you a lot more control over the footage and uh, kind of helps you save some of those clips that maybe would have been lost otherwise. So you're going to start by going into Premiere or whatever project that you have open. And you're going to right click on the actual clip itself on the timeline. You're going to go up to replace with After Effects composition. And this is going to open it in After Effects for you. Uh, you can save this. I'll usually save this next to the project file and just uh, call it whatever you want. We're going to call it Content Aware and then go ahead and open that up. On the right hand side, you're going to see this new window that's called Content Aware Fill. If you're not seeing this, you can go up here to Window go down and find content aware and make sure that's checked and then it should open up right here on your right hand side. For us we got this clip for a uh, background check company that we were shooting a commercial for and obviously we didn't have permission to use Apple's products or use their logo on anything. Uh, so this is a really cool way that we can utilize After Effects new content aware fill tool to actually get rid of the logo with just a few minutes of work. So we'll start by going up here to the pin tool, or you can actually select a circle or a square, or ellipse, whatever you want, uh, just to make a mask. So we're gonna go ahead and make a mask around the logo that we wanna get rid of. Go down here and make sure that your mask is selected into subtract instead of add. And you'll see here on the right hand side that there's a little area showing kind of the shape and uh, what the mask is actually selecting. So now in the content aware window, you're gonna notice that there's a few options. There's gonna be the alpha expansion option, which I would usually leave between 20 and 40. Basically, this is just gonna take your mask and say that it can be a little bigger or it can be a little smaller. Um, you're, you're gonna wanna make it a little bigger, that way it can have uh, a few more pixels to kind of work with and rebuild the information. So I'll put this at 26, just leave it there. The next option that we have is the fill method. Fill method has three options. The first one is going to be object. Object is for tracking basically any object, of course, that has like a moving background behind it. So if you're tracking a person or if you're tracking a vehicle or a tree or a sign and you want these things to be taken out, this is the option that you would choose. The next option that we have is surface. Surface is what we're gonna use actually for this shot because the logo isn't actually moving. Nothing behind the logo is moving. We're not taking the entire computer out of the shot, we're actually just taking the logo off of the computer. So there's still something behind it. This will actually be what you'd use for obviously taking logos off of things or taking blemishes off of skin. Basically something that you're just removing or something on the surface. And the last option is edge blend. This one I don't think there's a whole lot of use for because I feel like most of it is gonna be fulfilled within the other uh, cases if you wanted to use it. What edge blend does is it will take just like the edge pixels and it'll fill it with like a solid color. Uh, for this, I could see ideal use cases being uh, maybe like text on a white piece of paper or uh, something that you don't mind it being filled in with like a solid color. Obviously that's not gonna be what we're using today. So we're gonna go back to surface. And the last option we have to go through is range. And this is pretty simple. It'll either track and replace the information within your work area or the entire duration of the clip. For this, we're just gonna choose work area. And then right below this, we have a button that's called create reference frame. For this clip itself, we won't really need to do this, but this is for your specifically like difficult clips. This will actually take you away into Photoshop so you can work on the clip, create a reference frame, bring that back into After Effects, and I can use that to replace the spot here. For this shot, After Effects actually does a pretty good job of replacing the information by itself. So what we'd hit next is generate fill layer. But first, before we do that, we're gonna wanna track this. Um, now a lot of people, they like to just click on mask path and they'll just change keyframes to move their mask over the logo repeatedly. I prefer not to do this because I feel like this is covered unless it's a, a particularly difficult clip to track. I'd prefer to actually use just the mask track feature that's within After Effects. To use that, you're just going to go over to the mask, right click and hit track mask and this is going to pop up. You're going to hit this little play icon and that will move forward and actually track the logo and if if it's a particularly difficult track, then you'll have issues here, but this is obviously pretty simple. So now when we go back over it, you can see that it does actually move with the logo. So at this point, this is where we're gonna go back into the content aware 
and hit generate fill layer. So now what it's doing is it's analyzing those edge pixels and it's gonna fill in those edge pixels with new content. As you can see, it has filled that in and it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit play on this and see what it looks like. It came out pretty well, um, but you can still see kind of like a smudge look on there. Not anything the average viewer is going to see or pick up on, um, but you can still go in and you can clean this up a little more. Like you can go into feathering and maybe add it 25% feather and just kind of see it'll clean it up a little better. So once you're finished with this, you're gonna go up here and you're just gonna hit the X. You're going to save, and this is automatically gonna move all of your information into this new clip that's already on your Premiere timeline. Now when we hit play, as you can see, even in full screen, you still don't really pick up on that movement or even that smudge, it's not quite as noticeable from a full screen view. So we just finished one clip. That might not be quite as useful for a lot of you who are doing primarily wedding work and stuff like that, but I think this next part is really gonna be where you're gonna get most of the use, which is gonna be removing photographers from your shots. So as you can see, we have the groom here getting ready, kind of straightening up, and you can see that the photographer, as always, has been very sneaky and is barely even noticeable there, but we would like to remove her just so that we can save the shot and actually use it. We're gonna move forward with the same process. We're gonna go in and we're gonna replace this shot with an After Effects composition. We're going to rename that again, go ahead and save that. It's also worth mentioning that where you save these After Effects files, um, it's going to create a folder full of images called fills, and these folders can get large fairly quickly. Once you export the clip, you won't need these anymore, so you can delete them, but it's just good to be aware. All right, so now that this is opened up in our After Effects project, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing, but instead of going to the ellipse tool up here, we're gonna go ahead and grab the pin tool. We're gonna go around our friendly little photographer here. Click around, and down we made our mask. And we're gonna go back down here and we're going to, again, there's not a whole lot of movement in this shot, but we're gonna just track the mask just so that we know for sure that the mask is going to be covering her the entire time. Okay, so now that we've tracked the mask, again, we're gonna go back over to the mask, click on it, and make sure that it's subtract instead of add, and then go back over here to the content and fill window, and make sure that object is selected, we're working within the work area, um, and then we're gonna hit generate fill layer. What you're gonna notice on this one, as opposed to the other one, is that uh, the content aware fill automatically has a lot more information to work with because on the, the last clip that we did, it was just like a silver Mac. It was able to kind of pick up on uh, shadows and lighting and it was able to really build that to make it look pretty good. With this, we have wood paneling, we have shadows, we have uh, different colors and all kinds of issues. So there's a lot more to take in and After Effects just doesn't know quite as much um, on how to like fill that out and really do it well. So you're gonna see kind of what happens when After Effects does struggle and I'll show you kind of how to work around that. All right, so as you can see, it did fill it in with some wood paneling, but it's not believable at all. Um, there's no way that you can actually get away with showing this to anyone. It would be distracting, it would kind of just ruin the shot, and it's still just not usable. So the way to get around this is we're gonna back up before we had done this, and this is where the button right above Generate Fill Layer called Create Reference Frame is gonna come into play. So we're gonna go ahead in here and make sure that we're at the very beginning of our clip, and we're gonna hit create reference frame. Now this is gonna open us up into Photoshop. I'm gonna get these out of the way because they drive me crazy. What I'd recommend doing, and because we shoot video, uh, we have this ability a lot of times to go back into our clip. And if we go back into our Premiere project file, I have this entire clip. If you go to the very beginning of it, we have a spot where maybe the groom wasn't doing what we wanted him to do. Like he's not still like just putting his jacket on just how we wanted, but we do have all the paneling next to him that's completely open. So what you can do there is you can actually export the frame right here with this little camera. Um, save this as uh, maybe fill and save that next to your project file. And then once you get back into Photoshop, you're gonna go over, find that PNG that you took, pull it on top, and you're gonna try to line it up at the best you can. Take the opacity down um, just so you can kind of see both and make sure that you're lining it up. I tend to just select the move tool and I'll use the arrow keys to kind of inch its way into alignment. So you can go ahead and back on out, and then you're gonna take the lasso tool, and we're just gonna go around where that mask was, and then we're going to create a mask here using the mask button. Take this back up to 100%. And now, as you can see, we've gotten rid of that open space. We have our original groom back. It doesn't line up perfectly, but it's good enough for 
uh, the viewer to not really pay attention or catch it. So at this point is when you're gonna go up and you're gonna exit out of Photoshop. You're gonna hit save and it's saved a reference frame here. So now at this point, we'll just continue as if we hadn't done anything, just hit generate fill layer. All right, so we know we're finished now because the bar over here is no longer loading. And now once we hit play, you'll see that she's gone. Um, these boards all line up pretty well. Uh, there's no reason that I would be paying this much attention to this during this shot. Um, and this unusable shot because of the photographer is now completely usable. So at this point, you're gonna do the same thing you did on the last clip where you just exit out, save it, and it'll automatically import all of the effects that you did into a composition within your Premiere clip. There you go. So that's how you're gonna use Content Aware to create completely new clips and usable clips and remove photographers, logos, any blemishes, stuff like that, and just make your footage the best that it can possibly be. I hope this episode of Ask the Editor has been helpful. Keep submitting your questions to ask at rkscreative.com or through our website and let us know how we can help take your editing to the next level.